Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with social psychologist, entrepreneur, author, producer, humorist, and programmer, Bo Bennett. He has a PhD in social psychology and is currently running over a dozen websites. He's written over a dozen books, mostly on the topics of critical thinking, and teaches several online courses. He has been in the self-publishing industry for over a decade and has written multiple screenplays. He's got a great story. Enjoy this interview. Hey, Joe. How are you? Hey, I'm good. It's great to meet you, man. Yeah. Nice meeting you. So, yeah, where are you located? Uh, right outside of Boston. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I'm here in Kansas City. It's great to meet you. Um, and, you know, before we get into your life and your work, I kind of want to start the conversation off here with COVID. You know, the last three years was quite a thing. How did you survive the last three years, and how has it changed you? Uh, whew, how did I survive? Well, I... Um I work from home. Uh, I've always worked from home. I'm, I, I guess this, this may sound, <laughs> uh, this may sound a little bit shallow considering what some people went through and how many people died and everything. But really like the, the way that COVID affected me most was not going out to eat. <laughs> that was, that that was like the big change in my life. Um, we we used to go out to eat several times a week, and uh, that was like our entertainment. That's what we did. So that was that was how it really changed us. But really, being somebody who always works from home, and having my family here, and just doing a lot of things outside and locally, um, it it didn't. It didn't impact me nowhere near as much as it impacted other people. So uh, it it was um, I, I was definitely one of the, the fortunate ones. I did get COVID once, um, and this was at more at, toward the uh, the tail end of the pandemic when uh, I was vaccinated like three times or something by then, and it was it was really like a like a 24 hour flu for me, um, and that that was pretty much it. Yeah, no, I understand. And I think for a lot of people, having some time to pause and recollect, I mean, there was a lot of people, there was a lot of silver linings that went into it. And I don't think it um, had anything to do with the woe and the death and all of those things that were going on. So I totally get sure. it. Um, so let me ask you this. Let me kind of get to the brass tacks of exactly what you do on a daily basis. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. And one of the kids looks up at you and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I work with computers, and I'd probably leave it at that. <laughs> uh, it, it really, it, and that's pretty much my standard answer. When when people ask me, and I don't want to get into it too much because it, it's really so complex what I do, and it's so involved. And you know that when people ask you, so what do you do for a living? Most of the time, they're just being friendly. They really don't care. So I usually just <laughs> – say that I work with computers and, and kind of leave it at that. I, I say, like, I work with programming on the software, and uh, I have some some online businesses. Uh, but typically, typically, if I leave it at I have some online businesses, I, I get the sense that they're probably thinking that I'm involved in some kind of porn or something because I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> the fact is, it's just a lot of the stuff I do, it, it, it's not only complex, but it's also varied. Like, there's such a wide range of websites and software and even just general uh, work-related things that I do that um, – that's just uh, it, it's just not easy to tell somebody. So in, in fact, when when people usually do ask me, or I have to put it down on a resume or or like a application or something, I usually just put either business owner or I put a professor because everybody understands what a professor is. <laughs> so I don't have to explain that to people. I can just tell them I'm a I'm a professor, and I, I leave it at that. Well, let's get to how we got to this point. So first and foremost, you know, what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? The third grade? Uh, I, I honestly don't know if I had any aspirations prior to fifth grade. So maybe that doesn't really change the question much if we could just push it up to fifth grade. And fifth grade is when I 
started working with my father in his machine shop doing a lot of the injection molding projects where I would work on machines and, uh, and, and inject plastic into molds, take the molds apart, take the pieces that came out and, and fix them and cut them and make them look nice and then just keep on uh, repeating that process. Uh, very repetitive, a little bit dangerous for a fifth grader, especially the fumes that I was breathing. But during that time, I listened to my sister and my mother's real estate and sales tapes. Uh, this is back when people listened to things. They listened on cassette tapes. So they, they had a bunch of those. I would listen to them uh, because they were in the sales industry or in real estate. And I was really getting into it. So I, I really wanted to be involved in my own business. I was kind of uh, being molded at that point uh, from all of these gurus <laughs> about starting my own business, doing my own thing. So from that point on, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So what do you think some of the other seeds were later on that to help you get to a point where, you know, computing was where you wanted to be, programming. How, how did kind of that evolve professionally for you up to present day? Well, I got my first computer probably in uh, the fifth grade. Maybe it was, the, yeah, the fifth grade, the Apple IIe. And my mom... Uh, Gave me some, um, gave me some. Well, she didn't give me lessons, but she paid for somebody to do some lessons for, um, for programming, or just like get to know the computer. So that kind of got me interested in it. I was allowed to to um, take that information and education and kind of put it to use. So that got me started in programming, but I really didn't follow that through all the way. It wasn't until college when uh, I started playing around with the computers at, uh, at the university and mostly uh, in the graphic design field because I, I ran a little business back then for promotional items and I had to do and, and I did the artwork and created the logos and it turns out I was very good at that part the graphic design without any formal education or training in, in that area. So I, uh, I I really got to know the programs, and I've been involved in graphic design, and then um, and then the next evolution of that was when I sold the graphic design business after I graduated college to start the web hosting business, and out of necessity, once again, I really had to learn programming and how to uh, how to create these websites and host the websites, and that was back in a day when. If finding a place to host your website was next to impossible it was, it, because it was like the Internet just first came about. So so I was one of the companies, the the, the original companies that, that started offering that service. So it, it was really out of necessity and kind of like an evolution of um, computer technology and the software technology and the technology with the Internet where it went. And uh, that kind of brings me to where I am today is, is working with artificial intelligence and its applications on the Internet. So, you know, there's so much talk about AI right now. Is there any of this that concerns you? I mean, obviously humans have a way of meddling and making things odd, but, like, just on the surface or even as we dig into chat GPT and things like that, and it's becoming more and more of a topic and something we're seeing more of, what is your general feeling about the direction and the overall idea of humans interfacing with AI? Well, I think it is, without overstating it, it's the biggest thing since the Internet. And there's there's been, you know, really since the Internet, there, well, there was the personal computers. I'm just thinking like the general stages of, of things that completely changed the way we live in our economy. And there was a the personal computer. I mean, that was huge. And then came the Internet. And then came, uh, I, I think social media could could probably, there's a good argument for that to, um, to be part of these major changes. Uh, but I believe that artificial intelligence is far more impactful or will be far more impactful than, than pretty much anything, with, with the exception of the Internet, because the Internet is kind of the foundation on which artificial intelligence 
um, will will really take off. But I think even without the internet, artificial intelligence could do some amazing things. Uh, so I, I I think the, the number one, I think it is going to be absolutely huge. I think people are afraid of it in that people tend to fear all new technologies and major changes. I think that artificial intelligence certainly will put a lot of people out of business, a lot of people whose jobs are no longer uh, needed, um, even already, like somebody like, um, for example, prior to, geez, three, four months ago, I was paying people on Fiverr like $80 to write a book description for our authors, for our clients. And now I upload the entire book <laughs> through Code Interpreter and ChatGPT. It reads it, analyzes it, and knows, and well, I, through my instructions, I tell it to write a, uh, like an uh, AIDA summary for the action, attention, and like all, all of that, like really good marketing book description. And it does uh, like the, the most amazing job, far better than I could have ever done putting hours into it, far better than I ever paid anybody else $80 to put into it. And that's just one stupid little example. Uh, but it, it, it's just mind-blowing how much it, that it is changing and it will change as soon as people understand what it can do and what the power is. Uh, so that, um, yeah, so the first thing is it's huge. The second thing is that it uh, it has a lot of potential applications and, and people just are not quite um, understanding it yet. I think people fear it more than anything because people – Fear what they don't understand. Uh, and was there a third part to that question, or did I? Answer no, 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 no. You nailed it. No, and well said. And I think I totally agree with you. It's uh, it's kind of that that unknown that everybody's kind of roiling with right now. And you know, I'm curious, being a tech guy, you know, who's kind of been a hero for you, whether it's been in technology or otherwise, someone that's been uh, an inspiration for you. I think um, I think Steve Jobs is probably. Like the the big tech inspiration guy, um, I I I grew grew up. I say grew up. I don't know. I I, um, I was involved when when Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were kind of sparring in order to get their computers to the market, and and there was a lot going on there. And I I tend to have like sided with Steve Jobs on on the ingenuity and the creativity and was a little bit turned off by Bill Gates and his ability to like just copy somebody else and, and buy it and repurpose it like the, the whole MS DOS thing. Um, I, I don't, I don't, th I think that was like an initial assessment. I don't think that's a fair assessment now, given everything that, that Bill Gates has done in his companies. And, but just to really answer your question, I, I kind of tended to, um, focus on on Steve Jobs and uh, his ability to to basically to, to change things and and uh, the, the industry and his creations and and then even even in uh, business situations and and just like for pure motivational and success related stories like when he got kicked out of Apple and he's like all right I'm gonna start Pixar and look at, and like wow. Could, I mean, it, 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 most people think that just starting a company like Apple is like getting struck by lightning. It, it doesn't happen multiple times, but, you know, he did it. He, he started Pixar after that, and look where they are today and what they've done. So uh, he, he really was a, um, a, a genius nonetheless and, and somebody who, who knew how to bring products to market and uh, an inspiration for me. So you mentioned motivation. I'm curious, what is that daily for you? What gets you out of bed? What gets you to accomplish what you want to get done? I think it's the fact that I have so much that I want to do, and I don't know if I'm if I'm skipping in the uh, the, the progression here of, of motivation, but you know where does where does the motivation come from from having from wanting to do all that stuff? You know, I I don't know. Maybe it's um, you know, being a, also having a PhD in psychology, I could tell you that it, it is there is a lot of that that's ingrained in us. A lot of that's part of our our personalities. 
we can we can get inspired, we can get motivation, we can have that external inspiration and motivation, but all of us do have a base level of motivation, and I think that uh, I was just fortunate to, to really um, be born with with a fairly high level of base motivation that, that keeps me wanting to do all these things. And then once I want to do all these things, if uh, if if I'm not feeling motivated one day to do a couple things, there's just so many more things on my list that I just do those instead. So I'm like always doing things. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Anybody alive on the planet right now? Uh, geez, that's... Um, that's a tough one. Oh, actually, it's probably not that tough. Steve Martin, the uh, yeah. comedian, actor. Yeah. You know, I, I love Steve Martin from since the very beginning, since I saw stand-up comedy routines on uh, on Johnny Carson and his time, not as a cast member, but his time as a guest on SNL, uh, all his movies from The Jerk to his, latest Only Murderers in the Building Hulu series. Uh, I, I did see him um, live on stage last year when he uh, he was in New York uh, releasing his book. Um, his, uh, his new comedy book is about his life. So he gave a little speech on it. I was fortunate enough to uh, have a ticket there, but I, I didn't get to meet him. Um, and the fact that he's getting up there in age, I, I would really like to meet him before he's gone. For sure. So, you know, of all the things that you've accomplished up to this point in your life, what are you the proudest of? Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to say my kids or things like that because that's kind of a uh, an easy way out. <laughs> and and if if you just look at uh, children in general, everybody has children, so it's not really that much of an accomplishment. But everybody says, yeah, but my children are the best. Yeah, but everybody says that, so... So let's just put that question, that that answer all together. I think yeah. what I'm what I'm probably most proud of is the the web hosting company that I that I built and started um, back in 1995. I sold in 2001. It was my most financially successful, but it was it, I also had like a really big team. Well, not a really, I, I don't want to. Uh, you know, of course, that's subjective. But it, it, in comparison to the companies that I've started and run since then, I've had that was kind of like my largest in-person team, and I, I really got to affect the lives of so many people that that did really well in that company um, financially. And we you know, we started a an affiliate program before Amazon even had an affiliate program. It was and the web-based software to uh, to change your website, that was not heard of at that time. So there was a lot of firsts that we did um, that uh, that I'm that I'm really proud of. You, even though if I don't get credit for it, like if if you look up the history of the internet, you're probably not going to see my name under the first affiliate program, even though it was two years before Amazon. But uh, but that's just the way it is. But I, I think that's kind of what I'm most excited about and, and proud of. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, and colleagues, but you ultimately run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Um, I think uh, I think the the really the view that most people have of me is, is pretty spot on, and the reason I say that is because I'm I'm not a very private person. And I I don't have different personas for different people that I hang out with. Even in high school, I kind of got in trouble for that because, in like in high school and college, you're supposed to kind of like fit in with the groups and kind of change a little bit, change your behavior. And it, it, there there are social coping mechanisms to to uh, that are really used evolutionarily to to help people. Um, fit in and, and be part of a group uh, and, and there's there's evolutionary benefits to that um, but you know not having my life at risk uh, it's something that I 
I, I kind of saw as something that I, I really didn't need to take part of. People always knew me in high school as somebody who, who just was kind of chill. I, I didn't like to go out and party. I didn't like to drink. I, I loved to stay in and watch movies. I loved to go out to dinner. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the, the persona that I, um, I, I put out there. And I've been kind of the same person ever since. So, uh, yeah. So, Bo, if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, delve into your product, anything that's a part of your world, where's the best place to go? Well, there are two websites. The first one is bobennett.com, B-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T.com, and that is my personal website where you could find my books and you could contact me and some general information there. And my businesses are at archieboy.com. That's where you could – the home page has a link to all of the different websites and the businesses that I, I currently run. And you can find me there. Right on. So this has been great. Thank you so much for opening up your world of tech. I'm actually a uh, technician for a large school district in the Kansas City metro, so that's my world. I've been in it for quite a while myself. Cool. Yeah. Fun. So we're, we're in the club. But – this has been great. So thank you, Bo. I appreciate it, especially with AI. I think it's so good to have people that are kind of diffusing this uh, misperception, so to speak, and, and just have a, a good conversation about it. So I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it as well. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, and more from around the globe. Our esteemed theme music was composed and produced by the great E.E. E. Pointer of Kansas City's River Cow Orchestra. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time.